Let us suppose that I'm the patient. And you are the students and the doctors. And I suffer from what you would call the delusion that I'm God. And therefore, you might want to do something about me or with me or humor me or ask me questions. And so I'm perfectly willing to submit to your examination and your treatment and uh, invite you to help yourselves. When did you become God? Now. Will you marry me? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. God, uh, you sleep on your stomach or your back? Sleeping is like politics. One sleeps on the right side, and then when you're tired of that, you sleep on the left. <laughs> when you're tired of that, you sleep on your back, and when you're tired of that, you sleep on your stomach. And it is thus that the world goes round. How you don't become God. Am I also God? Yes. Are we then the same person? No. Remember, three persons but one God. <laughs> God, could you tell us a little about Satan? Could I tell you a little bit about Satan? Yes. Uh, although the matter is a little esoteric, but uh, I told you all about it in the book of Job, where you will see that in the court of heaven, Satan is the district attorney. He is not as Christians imagine the enemy of heaven and the enemy of mankind. He's merely the person who sees the bad side of things and carries out the dirty work. And therefore, he saw Job and wondered whether Job really was as great a guy as he seemed to be and suggested that God should appoint a committee of investigation to find out. And the committee did its work very thoroughly, but the case went against Satan because it was proved in the end that Job was an honorable man. Now you notice that although we pay the salary of the district attorney, whenever there's a great criminal case before the public eye, people begin to take the side of the underdog. And the prosecutor always has less public sympathy than the defense, except in political trials. On the right hand of God, and you know the defense is always on the right hand of the judge in court, is our only mediator and advocate, which is the phrase referring to Jesus Christ our Lord. So there is the defense and there is the prosecution, and it is the function of Satan to be the prosecutor. There is a good deal more to it than that, because before all this started, as in a stage play, there was an arrangement in the green room before coming on stage, <laughs> in which uh, certain things were understood but that are only to be revealed uh, when the curtain goes down at the end of the play. Yes, but he doesn't know it. God, why do you hide from the sight of so many? Why do you hide? It's for the same reason you're hiding. Man has free will to the extent that he knows who he is. Not otherwise. If man has free will to know just what he is, and man is God, then you're saying that you are no more than any God in this room, or any man. That is correct. I'm no more God than any of you. And you only have the power to know who you are. Well, that is say, saying quite a bit, yes. <laughs> What is not God? There is nothing that is not God. How do you learn who you are? It's like waking up from a dream. After a while, one's experience begins to have what I would call a haven't we been here before feeling. Going round and round and round. And then you begin wondering, where am I going? And to answer that question, you have to Try and find out what you want. And so I went into that very thoroughly. What do I want to happen? And of course, as soon as you ask yourself that, you begin to fantasize. So I simply set myself to thinking through how far we could go. 
And so I soon found myself at a great push button place where I had a fantastic mechanism with buttons available for every conceivable thing I could wish. So I spent quite a bit of time playing with those. You know, you go going like that and here is Cleopatra and so on, you know, and then press this button, a symphonic music. And when, you know, you're like everybody's dream of the Sultan in the palace, you suddenly notice there's a button labeled surprise. <laughs> you push that. And here we are. Is boredom a problem? <laughs> yes, boredom is of course the problem. Uh, boredom is the other side of creativity. And the energy of creation, that is the yang, the yin side of that energy is called boredom. Everything, of course, is fundamentally yang and yin. If you understand that, you really don't need to understand anything else. As God, what responsibility do you feel to ameliorate evil in the world? I begin with the point that I am responsible for the way the world is. If I couldn't feel that, I'd have to blame somebody else. I'm not willing to do that because I know that under various changing circumstances it might be appropriate for me to be as big a rascal as rascals have been. Now as to improving the world, the world is always improving. It's improving even when it is declining, like a wave. It goes up and it goes down, it goes up and it goes down. And it couldn't go up all the time because if it did, we wouldn't know that that was up. So it goes down some of the time so that we can know when it goes up because if we didn't know when it went up, it would be like being in a space where everything was light. There would be no black marks on the space, like a piece of perfectly empty paper. Similarly, to be in a completely black space would also be a kind of unconsciousness with nothing to write home about. There would be nothing, nothing would make any difference. So therefore, if you're going to have black, you won't know that it's black unless you have some white, and if you're going to have white, you won't know that it's white unless you have some black. Why do you think you're supposed to love one another? Because if we get to that point, there won't be any of these ups and downs. We'll have to tell you. Correct, but that's not a teaching. It's a koan. A koan is a Japanese word for a spiritual problem used in Zen Buddhism, such as, what is the sound of one hand? And these problems are given to those who ask questions concerning their spiritual development. As St. Paul pointed out, <coughs> commandments are given not in the expectation that they will be obeyed, but in the expectation that they will reveal something to those who hear them. Yes. The hereafter is, of course, now. Because if you will examine it closely, there is no when else than now. And if you want to make hell of it, you can make hell of it. If you want to make heaven of it, you can make heaven of it. Purgatory, purgatory. It's all here. Always was, always will be. Death is an undulation in consciousness. How would you know you were alive unless you had once been dead? Yes. If you realize in the same way that Jesus did to kill God, why was it unnecessary for him to have material possessions and necessary for you? It wasn't unnecessary for him to have material possessions. They said of St. John the Baptist that he was an ascetic, but of Jesus, this man consorts with gluttoners and wine-bibbers and comes eating and drinking. And when Mary poured precious ointment on his feet, and anointed him. They said the same thing that the members of the vestry say to the minister today. Why this great expense? Couldn't it all have been sold for much money and given to the poor? But it's a problem. <laughs> it is a problem, sure. But you see, uh, in many ways, when you get down to these very deep ethical problems, where there sure is no easy decision one way or the other, you must look at the problem from the point of view of an artist. Which way of doing this is in some sense greater? 
it may be better to go off with a bang than with a whimper.